This video for Math 94 covers the topic of finding a vertex of a quadratic function. These problems are similar to homework number 6, sections 9, 3, and 9, 4, and they're like the problems 13, 14, 15, and 16. Let's take a look at this problem. Using factoring to find the x-intercepts, then use the intercepts to find the vertex for the equation. Now let's remember, the x-intercepts are where the function crosses the x-axis. So that's where you cross the x-axis. Now, when you cross the x-axis, you have a point where y equals 0. So y equals 0 at the x-axis. So we're going to use that fact to help us solve this. So <coughs> I'm going to let 0 equal x squared minus 6x. Now, by this point, you have three different ways to find and solve this for the solutions of a quadratic equation. You could use factoring, you could use completing the square, or you could use the quadratic formula. I'm going to factor out the x and get x minus 6. Now that gives me, using the zero product property, x equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals 0 or x equals 6. Now this tells me that my x-intercepts are x equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 6, y equals 6. Remember, x-intercepts, y has to be 0. Now, if I were to think about this a little bit, here is one x-intercept at 0, 0. Here's another one at 6, 0. One factor of a parabola, and remember the graph of a quadratic equation is parabola, is that parabolas are symmetric. And since these two points are on the parabola, the vertex where the parabola turns around has to be exactly halfway in between. And what's halfway in between x0, 0, zero and 6, 0? Well, that would be 3, 0. Now, the point 3, 0 doesn't have to be on the parabola. But I know the axis of symmetry has to be x equals 3. That has to be the case because these two points have to be symmetric. And that's exactly halfway in between. That means the vertex has to have an x-coordinate of 3. How do you find the y-coordinate? Well, you just plug it in here. So I let y equal x being 3, 3 squared minus 6 times 3. Okay, 3 squared minus 6 times 3 gives me 9 minus 18, which is negative 9. So my vertex is 3, negative 9. Now that I have these 3, I can kind of draw a pretty looking parabola like this. Okay, so there's my vertex. So finding the vertex by using the x-intercepts, the first thing you do is you let y equal 0. Then you solve the resulting quadratic equation however you'd like. And then exactly halfway in between these two is the axis of symmetry, where the parabola turns around. And I know now what the axis of symmetry is. And then I can find the vertex, because the x-coordinate of the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex are exactly the same. To find the y-coordinate, I just plug in that x-value into my original equation. Let's try that on this problem. You might want to pause this video, try it yourself, and then come back for a solution. Okay, let's take a look at this. 0 equals x squared plus 8x. Once again, I'm going to use factoring. This gives me the solutions x equals 0, or x plus 8 equals 0. So 0, 0 is 1 possible x-intercept. Here, x equals minus 8. So minus 8, 0 is the second possible x-intercept. Once again, just thinking about that, I know that I go through the point 0, 0, and I go through the point minus 8, 0. So my axis symmetry has to be halfway in between, so it's going to be x equals minus 4. The x-coordinate of my vertex is minus 4. The y-coordinate, just plug in. Now be careful, remember, I'm squaring minus 4 here. So that's going to give me 16 minus 32, or negative 16. So 
this would be minus 4, negative 16. And very poor drawing, but there you go. It's a picture of my parabola. Now, while this is a very useful method to do this, let's try one more, a little bit trickier. Why don't you do try this one yourself, and then come back when you're finished, and we'll do the solution together. So you might want to pause the video right now. Okay, again, I'm going to find the x-intercepts. Now, here I might choose to use the quadratic formula, but I'm going to use factoring again, but I really dislike this negative 1 here. I'm going to factor that out. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And then I'm going to factor this into x plus 7, x minus 5. That gives me solutions as x equals negative 7 and x equals 5, which gives me x-intercepts of 0, it's negative 7, 0, and 5, 0. All right, so again, I'm going to kind of draw a rough sketch here, negative 7 and 5 on my two x-intercepts. Where is the middle point between these? If you don't want to think about that too hard, you can just add these two points, negative 7 plus 5. Negative 7 plus 5, of course, equals negative 2. And then take that and divide it by 2. That gives me the midpoint. That tells me that the axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 1. So I know my x-coordinate of my vertex is negative 1. My y-coordinate, be very careful here. Notice that minus sign in front of x squared is not within the parentheses. So I need to be a little careful in my calculation here. That's going to be minus negative 1 squared is 1. This is going to be plus 2. And this is going to be plus 35. If I do all of that, I get 36. So there is my vertex right here. Okay, sometimes it's really inconvenient to find the x-intercepts to find the vertex. So there has to be a different way to do this. And it turns out there is. Let's review some ideas about quadratic functions. The quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or alternatively written f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Here's how you find some key points in a quadratic formula. To find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. But notice, if x equals 0, this term and this term become 0, which means that y equals c. So just looking at a quadratic function, you can tell me the y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we do like we did in the last problem. We let y equal 0 and solve. To find the vertex, we use the x-intercepts and symmetry like we did in the last problem, or we can use this formula for the axis symmetry. The formula for the axis symmetry is x equals minus b over 2a, where b and a are as indicated in the quadratic formula. Then, to find the y-coordinate, just like we did with the symmetry problems, we're going to plug that value in to the function to get the y-coordinate. This these two steps are often more convenient and more time effective than solving for the x-intercepts. So let's take a look at how that works. So find the vertex of this. Now this one I might be able to do by symmetry and factoring, but instead I'm going to remind myself that this is ax squared plus bx plus c, and that the axis of symmetry is given by x equals minus b over 2a. Now, in our case, b is 6 and a is 1. So that's minus 6 over 2 times 1, which is minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3. So my axis symmetry is x equals minus 3. That means the x-coordinate of the vertex is minus 3. To find the y-coordinate, I just need to plug minus 3 in for x.
And you might take a moment to do that on your calculator. That's 9 minus 18 plus 8. And that's going to give me negative 1 if you do that. So there is my vertex. Let's try this method with this one. Take a moment to solve this by yourself, and then restart the video when you're ready. Again, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. And my axis symmetry is given by minus b over 2a. So that case, that's going to be minus b is negative 2, a is 1. So that's going to be 2 over 2, or 1. So my axis symmetry is x equals 1. That means the x-coordinate of my vertex is 1. To find the y-coordinate, I merely need to plug 1 in for x into my original quadratic function. That gives me 1 minus 2 plus 3, which gives you positive 2. So there is your vertex. I hope you have found this video useful.